let us now talk about various types of uh, respiration based on the respiratory organs. The first is where the respiratory organ is skin, that is cutaneous respiration. Here the respiratory organ is skin and this type of respiration is seen in animals like earthworm. So these are the examples and even in case of frogs when they are in water. Frogs are amphibians. They can live in water as well as on land. So when they are in water, at that time, the skin acts as a respiratory structure. When they are on land, it is the lungs which help them for uh, this respiratory process. As uh, in case of frogs, even when they hibernate, skin helps in respiration. So when they are in water and during hibernation. So these are uh, common examples. We have already discussed the characteristic feature of the respiratory surface. That means if skin is acting as a respiratory surface, does it fulfill all those characteristics? So if we talk of the characteristics in case of earthworm, The skin is thin, it is highly vascular, richly supplied with blood vessels and there is pigment hemoglobin. So when we were talking about the respiratory surface, we said it should be thin, it should be highly vascular and if a pigment is present that adds uh, to the value of that respiratory uh, surface. Only difference is here in this case the hemoglobin is in plasma. In our case hemoglobin is in RBC whereas in case of earthworms it is in plasma. One more characteristic which must be seen by or shown by a respiratory surface that along, be, along with being thin and vascular it should be moist. So the skin of earthworm is kept moist because of the glands which are present on the skin which keep secreting mucus. Plus on the body, on the dorsal line, there are pores through which the silomic fluid keeps coming out. So it is kept moist by mucus and silomic fluid. So there are glands which secrete mucus as well as the fluid which comes out through the dorsal pores. So here it fits into the category of the respiratory surface and that is why skin helps in respiration. Earthworms, they take this oxygen when it is dissolved in the mucus. So suppose this is the skin of earthworm and here is the mucus and the fluid with which the membrane is kept moist and this black line it represents the skin. The blood vessels we said it is highly vascular so say this is the blood vessel which is carrying the blood to the skin. Now when oxygen dissolves this oxygen which is in the air, it dissolves in this mucus. And the blood which is coming closer to the skin has less concentration of oxygen. So oxygen from higher concentration diffuses into the blood where the concentration of oxygen was less. And this blood is continuously moving. So every time the blood which comes in contact with this Outer oxygen always has less oxygen and that is the continuous diffusion of oxygen from outside to the blood takes place. And we have to remember that here oxygen is carried by <coughs> hemoglobin. So oxygen binds with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin 
and this oxyhemoglobin gets transported. And this hemoglobin is in plasma. One more condition or one condition which is seen in case of these earthworms is if oxygen is not available in the medium, it could be the air or in the watery area where they're living, they die because of oxygen, a starvation. That condition is in absence of oxygen, earthworms die due to asphyxiation which is oxygen <coughs> sorry, starvation so in absence of oxygen the earthworms are going to die and reason is same because oxygen is essential for breaking down that food so that energy can be released or in other words it is essential for aerobic respiration so in case of earthworms the characteristic features are normal uh, shown by the skin and that is why skin acts as a respiratory surface and this is the cutaneous respiration in case of frogs we said skin is moist because skin again has mucus glands and oxygen dissolves in that mucus and then it is taken by the blood which is flowing through the blood vessels supplying to the skin and in frogs cutaneous respiration is seen only when the frogs are in water or during hibernation when they are on land they use lungs for respiration so here we have taken one organ skin and the respiration is known as cutaneous now in the next segment we'll talk about tracheary system that is in case of insects